Uh, so we're here with Dr. Rob Jarvis, um, and could you introduce yourself, please, and tell us your role? Yeah, absolutely. It, it, well, it's very nice to speak with you, Callum. Um, my name is Rob Jarvis. I'm uh, a, well, I'm a GP by background, but my current role here is as um, lead for student support co-lead for student support for the Scott Gem students. Um, I'm also the lead for student support for the undergraduate medical students at Dundee University as well. So the MBCHB students, the standard course that they do. Brilliant. Okay, so we've got a few questions for you today. Yep. First of all, um, how does your role fit into Scott Gem? Okay, well, I, I, it's a... Um, yeah, it's an in- interesting uh, role. My my main day job is actually as a, a sort of an academic working over at Dundee University and and trying to help the students there get through the MBCHB course. When Scott Gem was created, it's obviously a, um, a joint operation between University of St Andrews and Dundee. And I think when it was being created, we wanted to make sure that there was input from both sides. So um, when we thought about how we were going to try and help support students through um, the course, we wanted to have some strategic input from both uh, Dundee University and St Andrews University, and hence the leads for each of the different programmes um, sort of joined together. So I work with Dr Ruth Cruikshank, and she's the lead for the student support for the um, BSc Medicine students at St Andrews. And the two of us have oversight of um, trying to make sure that all of the students on Scott Gem are as happy and healthy and productive and uh, as they can be um, uh, as they progress through the course. Brilliant. Um, so what area did you work in before academia? Well, the, <laughs> the fact that I was trained as a GP probably gives it away a little bit. Yeah. So, so um, I qualified back in 1996. I went to Leicester University. Shout out Leicester, great place. <laughs> um, uh, and so I qualified in 1996 and I, I did a series of jobs. But essentially, I then went into public health for a while. I did that as a registrar. thought it was absolutely excellent and interesting, but realised I probably wasn't going to be the strategist that I thought I was going to be. Um, So I moved up to Scotland, met my wife, uh, became a GP, um, uh, did GP for quite a while in sort of rural and semi-rural practices um, in and around Tayside. And I also worked as a children's hospice doctor in um, uh, with CHAS, the Children's Hospice Association of Scotland, at Rachel House in Kinross. So I did that for about eight, eight or nine years as well. Um, but that was sort of dovetailing with my with my GP role. Um, I really enjoyed that. I'd done some time up in Inverness in paediatrics. Um, I, I I like the sort of the the dealing with kids and their families aspect. Uh, and actually, palliative care, um, I um, I see that as an essential um, part of practice. It gives, as a practitioner, it gives you a bit of opportunity to actually spend some time with people. Um, and it's at a really important time in their lives. And it's not as negative and horrible as everybody portrays it as being. If you get a chance ever to go to one of the children's hospices, they are the joyous, most colourful, interactive places around. Um, and it's all about putting life into the time that we have. So so actually, that was, um, that's, that was a great experience. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so can I ask what you enjoy the most about your current role? Um, yeah, absolutely. Students. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost a, it's a no-brainer. I, I like meeting with students and I like... Um, I, the, the great thing about this current role is I, it's a bit like being a GP, is that I'm available for people. They come and talk to me about maybe a whole load of different issues that they might have. Um, and, and my role is to try and listen. Um, if I can help sort things out, then I will do. But if I can't, then because I've been around the place for quite a long time, I can usually point them in the direction of somebody that might be able to help them. Okay. So, so I've been, um, and I've been working in academia along with my, my GP and my hospice role. I've been, I'm doing it for about 15 years now. So, so I sort of know the system fair, fairly well. And I find that that's quite, quite useful. But definitely interacting with the students and seeing a variety of different students and the enthusiasm that comes through um, with all the students I see. So that's the Dundee ones, but also the Scott Gem ones. um, And I can talk more about them if you want me to. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So 
as you say, we've worked with many students over the years. Um, if you had a piece of advice, the most essential piece of advice you could give to a first year, a new first year medical student, what might it be? Ooh, oh, well, there's several. Um, but, well, let's try and have a think. Um, it, a first year medical student, um, you're used to being pretty good and regarded as being a bit of a high flyer often. Um, if you're a graduate, you've come through with a good degree. If you're a school leaver, you've been an A-grade student and, and people have patted you on the back and have said, oh, you've got to medical school, well done. And, and actually suddenly you arrive at medical school and there's all these other people who are pretty clever. And, and it's quite easy to get a little bit overawed by that and to have a feeling that you don't belong because you're not worthy and some it's, it's a common thing i come across and actually i would say stick with it have a think about that have a think about the fact that everybody else is probably feeling this as well you do deserve to be here you're obviously very bright it is different from wherever you've been beforehand and the way you have to learn and the way that we sort of that medicine is, is a different sort of subject to what you've done beforehand. And so have a think earlier on about how you might approach that and how, how you might start thinking about developing your learning styles so that it works as efficiently and as, as effectively for you as possible over, over all the years. I, I see medical students come into year one learn in a very different way to medical students who leave at the end of the course and at some point they change the way in which they learn and I think if you can if you can think about that early on and start to do it from an early stage it really really helps. Okay. Um, in terms of advice for uh, students who might be stressed about exams or assessment is there something a tip or a bit of advice that you could have? No, well don't keep it to yourself. Um, yeah, go and see. Go, talk to someone. Now, that may be that may be your mates. It, it may be your family. Um, you'll have a support network of some sort. Um, um, if if that's difficult, if you find talking with your mates just makes it more stressful because they're also stressed and they're medical students, and then think about who else there might be. Um, and don't be shy about seeking slightly more professional help, whether that's counselling. Um, there are excellent counselling services at both St Andrews and Dundee. Um, they're, they're, they're professional, confidential, free. Um, uh, they'll see you or come, or come and see somebody like myself. Um, you know, I, but there's a little bit of, you've got to sort of reach out and actually, and actually find somebody to talk it through with. Um, once you have talked it through, it's often nowhere near as bad as, uh, as, as, it, as it can be when you're sitting there thinking about it all by yourself. So I, that would be my bit of advice, just make sure you talk it through with somebody. There's, there's, there's lots of ways we can help you with, with learning and development, but, but we need to know. And so, so yeah, talk to someone. Great, thanks. Well, there's one left, um, and this is a difficult question, I admit. If you could single out one thing as the most interesting that you've ever encountered in medicine, what would it be? I'm going to bring it back to Rachel House. Okay. Right, so the children's hospice. And the thing I found to be most interesting was the, ah, it's the technical term, the multidisciplinary approach, the MDT, the multidisciplinary team. Um, but the way in which medicine, nursing, play therapy, teachers, the cooks, the cleaning staff, the parents, and the kids all contributed to the atmosphere, which was a development therapeutic, um, let's try and get you better. That was the thing that I think in my whole career has sort of struck me as being the most effective. And if we could transfer a small part of that I think it is. It works generally pretty well in the, in the NHS and in the university sector. But but there, it was just exemplified this um, this sense that everybody was pulling together and 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 that there was somebody that was really important at the end, and that was you, you know the patient, one of the kids who were there. And if we can do that and replicate it for something like the students who are here on the on the Scotch M course or students at Andrews and Dundee, then then that would be my idea. So that's the thing that I that I. Yeah, relish. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time. That's not great. not at all. It was a pleasure. No worries. Thank uh -huh. you.